To demonstrate the shaping of an abruptly curved canal, I chose a mandibular molar with a sharp apical curve in the distal root. Here you see the axis I created prior to negotiating the distal canal. As is my habit, I took an 08 reamer, sometimes an 06, to initially negotiate the length of the canal. I've oriented the distal root so you can see the apical negotiation around the curve with the 08 reamer. This was only possible by bending the instrument at the tip, finding my way down the tortuous root, and once there using a series of short manual strokes followed by longer strokes while trying not to lose length. If the canal was patent with the short strokes and I lost length with the long strokes, I proceeded to the next instrument. Please note I am going slightly over the length of the root. In the mouth, I would only be going 0.5 millimeters beyond the constriction, taking me to the apical foramen, but not outside the confines of the root. Here you can see me doing the same thing with the number 10 reamer. I follow this with the number 15 relieved reamer. Next is the 20 reamer, pre-bent and used in the same manner. Please note we have managed to take the canal to a 20 without any visual signs of distortion. After the 20, I widen the coronal portion of the canal with the tape of piezo and then in sequence use the number 25 relieved reamer, one millimeter over the apex, followed by the 30 and 35 0.5 millimeters back and the 40 an additional 1 millimeter back. Here you see me bending the 2506 Nitai relieve reamer to negotiate the abrupt curve. While bending Nitai weakens it, the reamer is only used in either a tight manual watch winding stroke or in the 30 degree reciprocating handpiece. Once shaped to a 2506, I fit a medium point pre-bending it so it can more easily follow the glide path. Okay. Here you see the gutta percha just short of exiting out the apical end of the canal. The point has significant tugback. Please note the curve on x-ray which truly doesn't reflect the degree of curvature that was present. Also, please note that what appears a bit short on x-ray was right to the orifice when viewed directly.